Welcome to part five of the Introduction to HMIS Data Standards Training. This section focuses on elements required for all clients, particularly those for identifying special populations and geography. Disability is an extremely important data element for determining and prioritizing the most vulnerable clients in our community. The definition is this, a client with a health condition meeting one of the three parts is considered to have a disabling condition. Part 1. A physical, mental, or emotional impairment, including an impairment caused by alcohol or drug abuse, post-traumatic stress disorder, or brain injury. Now if a client identifies one of these, there are a few follow-up questions. Is the condition expected to be long-continuing or indefinite? Does the condition substantially impact the client's ability to live independently? And related to this, could their disability be improved by more stable housing? As HUD is the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the goal is to record disabilities impacted by or connected to a client's housing situation. There are two other types of disabling conditions that do not need those follow-up questions. Part 2. A developmental disability. Part 3. HIV or AIDS. Any veterans with a disability incurred or aggravated during active military service would also have a yes response for disability. One thing that is not included in this definition is documentation. Disabling condition does not require documentation unless disability is an eligibility requirement such as permanent supportive housing projects. This means that clients can identify disabling conditions. Another source for collecting this data is income. SSI, SSDI, service-connected disability, or non-service-connected pension are sources of income that indicate the client has a qualifying disability. The last note on collecting disabling condition data is on fair housing compliance. Residential projects must separate the program admission process from collecting disabling condition, but collection is still required. All clients need to have disability data collected. This includes children. A special reminder about disabling condition. There are two distinct parts, the general gateway yes-no question and the specific types of conditions that were included in the definition. They are equally important and will most likely align. Secondly, each of the specific types of conditions must have a date. This date is called the information date, or the date when the data was collected. It does not refer to when a client was diagnosed or realized they had a condition. It is the date of the project start or interim update or project exit. On the paper assessment, you'll see the general question at the top and the table below it with the specific types of potential conditions. Let's review the table in detail. Each type of condition has its own row. This is the order of the types in HMIS. Next, there are two columns for yes or no. A client should mark whether they experience each type of condition according to the HUD definition. If the response is yes for one type, complete the shaded columns to the right. The first shaded column is called disability determination. This just confirms yes, the client has this type of disabling condition. If a disability is identified, disability determination must be yes too. Remember that here we have abbreviations for client doesn't know, client refused, and data not collected. The second column contains the follow-up qualifying questions that part one of the HUD definition must meet. For physical, chronic health conditions, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, both alcohol and drug abuse, or mental health problems, the condition must also be expected to be of long continued and indefinite duration and substantially impair the client's ability to live independently. HIV or AIDS and developmental disabilities are automatically a yes for the column of follow-up questions. Finally, the last shaded column is start date. This refers to the date that the information was collected. 
This will either be the date of the project start, project exit, interim update, or annual assessment. Health insurance looks at a client's access to mainstream medical assistance and benefits through health insurance. This applies to current coverage, not anything in the past. Two collection notes. First, health insurance that is obtained through the healthcare exchange is considered private pay health insurance, no matter the amount of subsidy. If Medicaid is obtained through the exchange, it should be recorded just as Medicaid. Secondly, Ryan White medical or dental health coverage that some HOPWA clients receive is not considered health insurance. Data collection is required for all clients served. Health insurance can be collected at Project Start, Interim Update, Interim Annual, and Project Exit Assessments, anytime. Health insurance also has two parts, a general gateway question and specific types of insurance. We need both to get a complete picture. Here is health insurance on the paper assessment. The first part of the question is straightforward. Is the client currently covered by health insurance, yes or no? Then you must specify the type of health insurance. Select either yes or no and the date. Remember to only select health insurance that the client currently has. For a client's project start, a yes response would have the same date as project start date. If a month later their health insurance changes, the start date would be the date of the interim update. This question refers to the county where a client receives your project's primary services. This is the county location of the shelter, housing services, or supportive services that a client receives at any given time. All clients need a county of service collected on the project start assessment. It can be changed at update, annual, and project exit assessments if needed. You may start out looking for housing in the county where your office is, but ultimately they move into a unit a county over. Some projects have multiple locations and many serve multiple counties. NC County of Service helps us track data accurately for point in time count and helps regional reports more accurately reflect the location of services. It also helps us learn about where permanent housing is found across the state. We are currently working with our software vendor, WellSky, to simplify the way data is organized in HMIS at NCCEH. Soon, this question will be the only way to identify the county associated with the client's services. Make sure you're entering this for all clients now to help the transition. This question is at the bottom of the first page of our paper assessment. Since there are 100 counties in North Carolina, we ask that you write in the name here. The county or city of residence refers to where, geographically, the client was sleeping the night before entering your project. This location gives a geographic area regardless of whether it was a homeless or housed situation. This could be different from NC County of Service. These elements are required for heads of households, for some local funders, and SSVF projects. This data element is especially important for clients in permanent housing as it provides additional information to the COC about the location of clients. County or city of residence is only collected on the project start assessment. On the paper assessment, this element provides an open box for each question below NC County of Service. Zipcode at their last permanent address asks, where did the client begin this experience of homelessness? Collect the five-digit zip code if it is available. Last permanent address refers to where the client was last housed in a non-temporary location. Zip code of last permanent address must be collected for heads of households for SSVF projects and for some local funding sources on the project start assessment. It is also recommended for all types of projects, if available, for better analysis. Here is zip code on the paper assessment. Client location identifies the continuum of care, or COC, that the head of household is staying in. This element must be accurate as of the day of the assessment. This only needs to be completed for heads of households. Client location is collected on project start, interim update, and interim annual assessments to stay up to date. 
On the paper assessment, we list the three COCs the data center serves. If the head of household is staying outside of these three COCs, write the name next to the other response. All 12 COCs are available in HMIS. This concludes Part 5 of the Introduction to HMIS Data Standards Trainings.